Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Play to Find Out Fair Wanderings. We are here. Uh, finally, we've been waiting for this for a while. I know everyone's been really, really excited in the Discord chatting about it and stuff. Uh, there's been uh, pre-RP, but we're not going to talk about that because um, we'd have to have a... Uh, it'd be... Well, no, the channel's already tagged for uh, ch tagged for mature. It's fine. Uh, you'll figure <laughs> out. You'll figure out why this happened. You'll figure out why this ridiculousness happened later. It's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, and if you subscribe to Lily uh, Pad Nebula at Patreon dot Fake Patreon dot Online uh, <laughs> at the fifty right. dollar tier, uh, <laughs> dollar is in Australian dollars, by the way. Um, you get access to. All of the erotic fanfic that Lily right, of course, all of, of course, of course. So I highly recommend that tier. There's some quality, <laughs> quality stuff. Thank you, Michael, for uh, for for that. <laughs> That's the intro to our show, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so uh, thank you for joining us. Um, if you haven't checked out the show or the stuff before, Play to Find Out is just the brand of role playing shows we have on the channel. We have a bunch of stuff. Uh, if you go over to the YouTube or in the past Twitch pods, there's a bunch of them. Uh, we just ended the last show that was in this slot, Longfall, a couple weeks, a uh, few weeks ago now? Like, middle of December or so? Uh, and that was Lily a lot cried. of fun. Uh, yes, yes, we all know. I cried. Whatever. I'm so proud of ourselves. <laughs> uh, so that was a lot of fun, and now we are here for D&D 5th Edition, uh, with... Uh, crazy cast and a, a, you, you pretty much made everything about the setting, didn't you, Michael? Uh, yeah, completely homebrew. Uh, yeah. I stole some stuff from some of my favorite fantasy settings. Cool. Um, I, that's the best way to do it. If you have, if you have a discerning eye, you'll notice some very clear Warhammer fantasy references. <laughs> Excellent. It just cool. happens with me, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, first, I'm gonna we're, we'll go around, let everybody introduce themselves, say who they are, what they do, uh, just uh, all that. So we're gonna start with someone you may have seen in the channel before with a couple of our shows, uh, Dom Smooth Mage. How are you? Hey, I had a snow day today, and it actually <laughs> snowed. That's, that's different because I'm in the south in Georgia. <laughs> it never really snowed down here. Right. <laughs> Probably the most snow we had in the last. Decades? Jeez. Wow. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Decades? No, I meant. Yeah, decades are 10 years, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, then two decades. I was just making sure. So wow, yeah. Decades and centuries messed up. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad I decided to go a fro. <laughs> <laughs> Keep him warm. Oh, there you go. No, no, there you go. It's like, yeah, it comes in handy when this, like, the wind hit you. It's like, yes, hair. <laughs> <laughs> I usually rock the bald. Uh huh. But I was like, winter seems like it's going to be one of those winters. It's been, been, yeah. It, it's actually been one of those winters. I cast a snow-type Pokemon earlier, and you know, saw a Dragini, which was nice. Awesome. Good, good, uh, good. What else? Uh, I play on different channels. I'm playing on... Uh, it was last night on uh, Pondo. Mm -hmm. the Mad, uh, right now. And I just play different games. Uh, locally, I play Blood Bowl. Which is an amazing uh, football game of orcs and things. Didn't make it to the playoffs, but I still like tied with everybody close, like a five way split between going to the playoffs. And it just went we head to head, and I didn't do well head to head, which mm -hmm. was like, yeah, I still got the point system, so I did well. <laughs> gonna bring out noble humans. Basically, uh, I got to ask Nobby when I play the games, like, <laughs> awesome. And I love playing fantasy games. The character I'm playing tonight's Echo. He's uh, at the last minute a half ogre, half uh, Goliath. <laughs> half <laughs> orc, half Goliath. We didn't oh, say oh, ogre. He's upgraded oh, to ogre. Yeah, he's he's a changed. Right. Like this, Lily. I can't. I can't. I, I just... Dom's trying to get yeah, everything he can. Calm. I'm okay, calm. Okay, it's I'm fine. I, my eyes. I'm joking. It's a half orc Goliath. And <laughs> I did the, because uh, <laughs> he likes to do no and do no. I mean, deal or no deal with, when he's a player. So I just want to make sure it's the other end of the stick. Love when you growl at me, baby. Uh, you wore me down. 
It's uh, not the first time Smooth Mage has hit on me in one of these shows. True. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just a guy that loves life, man, and playing games. Uh huh. Awesome. We are very glad to have you back uh, for stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, next, we're going to go over to uh, Biz. How are you? Who are you? I'm good. I'm a person called Biz. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, um, you almost made Lily choke. <laughs> it's not that hard, actually. It's not. It's not. It's not. Oh, you know? Lily, Lily's well, like, um, just like super expressive. So. <laughs> College student. I go to college in Boston. Cool. Currently in Texas. Um, Berkeley College of Music. Um, love D and D. Um, I'm playing a tiefling bard who uh, goes by Rose Thorn. And I'm excited to start. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Very good. Uh, then we're gonna move up to Evie. How are you? Hi, I'm good. I have a kitty. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so this is great because while I play Andrella, um, my kitty will play Siander. <laughs> it all works together. Um, Excellent. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, hey, my name's Evie. Um, I stream a little bit on my own. I do some video games and every every now and again I'm in uh, well, TTRBGs, kind of like this one. Um, speaking of which, I meant to be hosting you. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just hit the enter button on that real quick. <laughs> all good, all good. There we go. All right. Um, so I got I got a few things over there, but otherwise I am super busy with graduate school stuff. Mm. So that takes up all of my time uh, when I'm not scratching out a few minutes here and there to do something fun so like this yeah. like Yay! this this and yes okay so i play andrella have we figured out how to say her last name what is your last name again <laughs> hold on strep, strep it's steperev steperev uh i think it's steperoff steperoff okay Steffi. i play andrella steperoff stepper ste well steperoff. it's spelled steperev but we're we're changing it to spell it steperoff now it's so fine. Step her off. Every time we say your last name, you just see the Sephiroth theme song oh. comes back. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. It's All right, so one of moments where we would have made Lily choke. <laughs> so, uh, so now we, now we know what's gonna happen if we ever meet a character named Aerith. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, that hurt my pride. That hurt my pride. <laughs> It's like I stabbed my healer so well. No! Like, this is going to be so well. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Wait. <laughs> awesome. I thought you stand down was a thing. This is bull crap. Cool. Uh, yes. And last but not least, we're going to move uh, right to the center. And Michael, tell us who you are. Tell us how you are. Hello, my name is Michael or MTO All Pro on Twitter. Uh, MTO 2424, basically everywhere else. Uh, I'm the founder and lead game designer for SwiftCat Design. I design games like The Circle, Aris Daya, and Love Languages. Uh, I also run the Guild Pact uh, test server, which is another tabletop RPG I'm designing that's meant to be played over text and is a lot of fun. Uh, I have also been a GM for Lily's channel in the past. I GM for Play to Find Out The Circle and uh, Play to Find Out Longfall. I've also been a player on several other streams um and beyond that i uh i wrote the fair wandering setting uh it uh i'm i'll take a minute to just kind of explain what the deal is so um oh you also made this lovely map yes i did mm -hmm. thank you so fair look at wandering, that look at that oh, um, way. look at that <laughs> fair uh, fair wanderings is sort of uh, modeled after kind of a weird era in history called the Great Northern War, um, which is the war between like the um, Swedes and the Finns and the Danes and the Austro-Hungarians and the Russians, like 
all trying to kill. Did I say Swedes? Everybody I listed, except for Sweden, <laughs> trying to kill Sweden, which is basically the that. The Swedes are trying to kill the Swedes. The right. Swedes, some some Swedes were trying to kill Swedes, and there were like know. Cossacks. It was a it was a confusing war. Okay. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a whole thing. So um, yeah, it was a different time. It's a different time. <laughs> um, and so uh, our um, our setting is kind of set in the the this this world's equivalent of like the Ural Mountains, the Godspine Mountains. Um, these massive mountains that divide what is considered the civilized world from the rest of existence on this continent. Um, uh, We are playing characters in some way or another connected to the nation of Vossenland, uh, which is a kingdom that has been at war with various of its neighbors for about 10 years now. Um, predominantly human with some elven and gnomish influence, uh, although not that much. Um, we, we start our game in the city of Iken, um, a, uh, a, um, like kind of bastion of learning, uh, set amongst the, the high mountains of Vossenland. But, um, not all is right. The Cadrian uh, Confederation, a hyper imperialist, hyper capitalistic society that has been overthrowing feudalist states left and left and right, has come to Vossenland and invaded, and now their armies are at the gates of Eichen. Um, and I think that's where we find our uh, find our find our show starting cool um anybody uh have any questions before we before i, I do my like little intro cut scene uh, or you good uh i think i'm good um, um <clears throat> unfortunately i can't grow a goatee like my character cause we're <laughs> oh wait 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 goliaths are hairless I'm half orc. <laughs> <I'm> cheating. <laughs> All right. You so, just want your cake and eat it too. Exactly. So have half a goatee. <gasps> there you go. <laughs> you know, I have piece of the goatee that that matches the stripes on my face. It's like right. stripe, stripe, like goatee. Exactly. Like, yeah. There we go. <laughs> See, compromise. All right. So, um, uh, I think we. Fir- I think the first thing we see is. I, um, if this was, I'm, I'm, I took a bunch of film classes in college, so if I ever get all, like, a movie storyboard on you, forgive me, um, but we see the, we see the, um, (laughs) we see the, um, like, helicopter, like, wait, there's helicopters here? Helicopter flyover. (laughs) Oh my god, why would you get a helicopter to escape? Oh my you really need to slow down on that screwdriver, okay? <laughs> I can't lie. I feel a little buzz right now, too. So <laughs> Great, great. Like, this is good. This poor, is good. Poor, poor Biz, who's only 20. That's okay. So I'm not drinking anything. It's fine. It's fine. We have, the, we have the, like, slow helicopter pan over the, the walled city nestled among the mountains. Um, and surrounding it is siege equipment. Uh, catapults and siege towers and trenches um, have laced around the city like a noose and are slowly strangling it. Um, you, we see defenders on the walls and places where the walls have nearly been breached by sappers and catapults and trebuchets and all the manner of horrible things. Uh we zoom over the wall. We see the university grounds, um, once splendid, now desolate. Everything that was not needed has been burned for firewood or used to make impromptu fortifications. Um, and uh, finally, we are live at a small um, brick building at the edge of the university district. Um that just says constabulary, uh, and we uh, we go inside. 
to uh, to find uh, a simple room uh, with a desk and three cells. Two of them have people in them. One of them has two people in them. <laughs> and in said cell, we find uh, a um, we find two interesting individuals. We find a um, a uh, a rose. Can we describe your character, Rose, first? Rose, okay. She is a purple-red tiefling, standing at 5'9", with a thin devil-like tail and ram-like horns. Uh, her tail uh, shape at the end is sort of like a spade. Mm -hmm. Her hair is half-shaved and very curly. Uh, her right eye is a deep red and the left a deep purple. And at the first glance, she gives off an aura of confidence and mysterious allure. She's curvy and looks soft to the touch, despite her devilish traits. And then we see the woman who's probably touching her at this point. <laughs> a, uh, it, has, it doesn't happen all the time. All the time. <laughs> you guys have been stuck in a prison together for a month. I, well, it, we're, we're getting you know. low on food. We can't spend too much calories right, right now. Right, exactly. Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's war so, time. We have to ration. Uh, Cecilia, what do you look like? <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing right now? Um, Me? Well, I mean, both of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. Oh God. Um. So an image approximation. Uh, uh, I'll send one. Okay, so, um, kind of coming into the view, um, a woman that, uh, you might, like, quick glance would think, would, like, see, like, oh, that's a human, but, um, like, upon closer inspection, uh, there's some subtle differences. She is uh, probably, like, five, seven-ish, something like that, um... She has, like, long black hair, kind of shoulder length, and there's, like, green, like, highlighted or mixed into it. Uh, she has blue eyes, um, very, like, lithe body, uh, like, kind of, like, uh, like toned. Um, she has also, uh, like, that's, like, the initial appearance, but then when you, like, if you get, like, a closer look, her eyes are, like, angled and slitted, like, uh, I don't know, like a snake's eyes or something like that. Uh, um, funny how that works. Funny how that works, yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's She's like, a witcher. <laughs> um, like on the back of her neck, uh, like, and kind of like going down into like the prison shirt, are uh, like kind of green and brown uh, scales. And then um, prob I think probably like as the uh, like camera like gets in this shot, uh, we see her leaning against the wall. And like her tongue shoots out, and we see it's forked. Um, <laughs> as they're like look, as they're like kind of like, looking out to see whatever's going on. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's Cecilia. Awesome. So, what what are what are what are you doing when when the thing that's is about to happen happens besides each other? Uh, I think it, camera. I think that would be I, would have been funny if we like we come into view like and like Cecilia is like we see Cecilia like putting her shirt back on. Yep, perfect. <laughs> perfect. We see everyone putting their shirt back on. Yeah, and yeah. And um, you know the door to the constabulary fries open, and this um, tall, um, tall, fairly dark-skinned woman with silvery hair uh, that's been. Uh, cut short. It's only grown out ever so slightly. She hasn't had time to shave it down. Uh, wearing heavy plate armor enters and uh, looks around rather frantically. Um, have we seen this person before? I, I think you have, but I don't think she's spoken to you before. Is she like the warden? She is not. Okay. A couple of weeks ago she came in with um, some other people and interrogating you specifically when you first arrived. Fair. Because you're a scary foreign snake lady. Listen. Um, and <laughs> Rose is but a simple and maybe a little bit ridiculous um, 
charlatan. Listen, just because I wanted to use my weird magic on the princess. Okay, yeah. Excuse me, I'm a bard. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure thing. So, <laughs> so yeah, she, she comes in and she looks around. Um, Looking for something, hun? Your cellmate. And then she, uh... She oh, someone wants me. Well, someone else. Hmm. Are you two quite finished? <laughs> oh, yes, just finished a bit ago. Well, unless, uh, you want to join. <sighs> Bloody foreigners. Okay, so, here's the situation we find ourselves in. Mm hmm The city is under siege, and I am short on manpower. I know you are a healer, and I know you had questions about the princess when you first arrived. Yes. I'm willing to forgive your crimes if you agree to help me. That sounds fair. And she, what of me? Yeah, I, I, I like I like glance over at uh, Rose, and then I glance back to her, like, and what of you? And she like starts to just unlock the door. <laughs> that's maybe when the that's maybe when the other prisoner uh, like. An orcish man like leans forward on the bars and just like looks out at the two of you, <laughs> like, "Yo, what the fuck, guys? <laughs> <laughs> what about me?" It's just kind of like, "Well, um, I'm sure Cecil won't be able to heal at her fullest potential without her uh, new friend around, don't you think?" Of course. So, uh, I like, I like, I just like point out, like, at all the cells, like, is this a j get out of jail free card for everyone? I'm mean, look at this, and I like, I like motion at, uh, what was it, what was his name again? Uh, Kirkon. Kirkon? Kirkon, the giant, he's, and he's like a big orc. Mm -hmm. Like, he's not small. Right, yeah, and I, I like motion at him, like, look at this specimen. Don't you think that he could be, he could be of assistance? I give him a little wave. I'm not recruiting for your sex cult, snake. <laughs> Ma'am, the city is under siege. Get your mind out of the gutter. Yes, this is serious business. If you all, if you all agree to swear to protect the VIP, you can come. I, and she looks right at Rose and is like, uh-uh, don't tell that joke. And what, uh, what, what, what very important person are we protecting? Do you want out of the cell or not? Uh, yes. She, she, like, she takes her long sword out of her belt and just holds it out to you and just says, swear on my sword. Which one? What, what do you want me to say? Do you... You will protect my charge with your life. I'll protect your charge with my life. When she, like, cuts your hand with the sword, like, <sighs> slightly. And she goes over to Rose and is like... Oh, my. Um, I have a question. Is the title screen still supposed to be up on the stream? Is the title screen up on the stream? Still supposed to be well, up? We're, not, we're not showing the Roll20 right now. Uh, okay. No, no, we're no, we're good. Okay. We're good. Okay. And she just oh, holds okay. up this. She holds up the. She holds up the sword to you. I promise to protect your. She glances her up and down. Charge. Just before you even finish, just slice. <laughs> Ow! And she like she like digs in a little bit more than she did on the other one. Like, a bit hasty, darling. I'm getting too excited. I'm gonna regret this. And she she like undoes the cell and she goes over to Kirkon and slices his hand too and he speaks gruffly like an orc. Mm -hmm. Um he's not a man he's not an MC, so he doesn't matter. Um Where are things? She like throws you a set of keys and she just points to like a chest at the end of the room. Ha! Ah. And then jingle. I walk over and unlock it. <laughs> All right, and then I just start. I just I just strip 
to get into my armor. Perfect. Yep. So that, I think I think so I think what we I think the way this scene ends is we hear Rose's reaction as like uh your shirt is like thrown at the camera. Uh-huh. Basically, <laughs> and that's like disguises the cut. And it's the wolf whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's actually that's perfect. So, what what happens is it goes. It's the you, we hear like the wolf whistle, and we see like the you know the the like cream colored fabric of your blouse fly into the camera, uh, and then the we we get that very clear transition where it's a different kind of fabric, and then we hear a woman like humming softly to herself as she shakes it out, um, and like puts it back in the wash, uh, and we're in a peasant's home. Um, uh, a woman, uh, a pregnant woman is like washing clothes and across from her, uh, actually, I don't know if you're across from her. Where, where are you, uh, Andrella? Um, so I've made fast friends with her five-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sonia is, um, not Sonia. What was that character's name? I think that one was Sonia. Sonia? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. Sonia is uh, no. Sonia is the wife. Gwyneth is the daughter. Okay. Uh, so Gwyneth is Gwyneth is um, Gwyneth is a little like brown-haired human girl with big eyes and a very boisterous attitude. She's probably like climbing you when we first see you in a shot. <laughs> uh huh. And I'm like I like kind of um, bend down under her weight, and I'm like, oh. You're doing such a good job. I don't, I don't think I could ever survive such an attack if this was real. Now, go get that one. And I cast Minor Illusion to like create a little stuffed enemy thing on the other corner of the room so that she jumps over and goes after it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she just, yeah, she just like leaps off of you and slams into, um, what, do, what do you look like? Real quick, your oh yes physical okay. description, please. So, um, just to give our audience an idea of what they're seeing. Yeah. So, Andrella is an Asimar, which is the kind of angel blood race, mm -hmm. um, and everything about her sort of glows. She is definitely the type that when she walks into a room, she ends up commanding immediate attention. Part of that is her immense just natural beauty based on her bloodline. Um, you got all the hot genes, is what you're saying. She, yes, yes. She has um, a a silvery kind of um, silken hair that falls down past her shoulders. Um, it's probably tied into a double braid at the moment. And um, with her hair pulled back like that, you can see that she also has silvery dragon scales that crest the top of her brow and go down the side of her face and down under her dress um she's got on probably like a very nice green silk dress at the moment um in mixed amongst those scales are also silvery tendrils that just kind of look like they're tattooed onto her skin um which is part of the asimar bloodline mark and mm -hmm. um her skin is just kind of this very very demure kind of honey color it's she's soft and she's smooth, and she's kind of thinner, but um, she's also looks much younger for her age. She's 17, but she, she looks more like 15. And she's, she's actually very tall, though. She's 5 foot 10, um, not in heels, uh, so taller mm -hmm. when she wears her courtly shoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, and she's, um, sorry, her eyes. She has these bright, sparkling, amethyst-colored eyes. Awesome. So, in harsh contrast to that, we see um, our uh, we see we see this little the little five year old girl with mousy brown hair slam head first into uh, Echo's knee. <laughs> uh, why? Just like like just like she's like going after the going after like the illusion and just bah! she like falls over and then we get the camera to pan up to see this gargantuan man that is Echo. Echo, do not approve of this little girl. Stop it. <laughs> and Echo is like a, um, 
if you imagine Tay Cruz with light skin, like light green skin, and uh, completely shaved head, like uh, technically you're right. Goliaths don't have hair, but because I'm half mm-hmm, orc, mm-hmm. I have hair, but uh-huh. I choose to keep it bald. Good. Uh-huh. Y'all don't y'all don't know this yet uh-huh. until uh-huh. you know I probably go to jail and I can't shave. Uh-huh. But I do keep the goatee. I have uh, white eyes as traditional Goliath, but I got pointy ears as per orc, and I'm just a uh, mus, well, pretty muscular. Like mm-hmm. you think, yeah, I, th- I don't think that guy reaches potential yet in like size yet, and he's like seven foot, about two hundred eighty pounds. Yeah. So this this <laughs> tiny little girl just looks up at you and she's like, "I'm sorry, Mister Echo." It's okay, little girl. I approve this message. Now keep going. Like, she, like, looks at Andrella to just, like, confirm that it's okay to, like, continue chasing this illusion. And before Andrella even responds, she's just gone. She's just over. Just, ah! And she, like, like tries to tackle this, like, fake stuffed animal that just kind of plops into, oh, yeah. like, a pile she's of linens yeah. that are being washed. She's definitely a, uh, got an instinct. She's gonna be a warrior someday. So, so super, so super preggers Catherine. Um... Not Catherine. Sonia looks looks up at you, uh, Andrea, and says, "Do you know when Raspin will be back?" I am not sure. She had business that she said she needed to take care of. I'm I, not sure exactly what that means anymore these days. I, I don't think anyone is exactly sure of what anything means anymore. Sieges will do that to a person. Just, just hope Catherine is all right, and we can find a way out of the city before things get worse. Um, and in true uh, TV show fashion, that's when we hear like trumpets in the distance <laughs> to signal that something has gone very wrong. Um, what do you? What do you? What do? You, what are you? An echo, uh, Andrella. What is your reaction? I clearly understand what these trumpets are signaling. Um, probably not. Yeah. So then, uh, I'm like, just like you like, just oh. hear them, but they're there's something you haven't heard before. Like, yeah, like in the course of the scene, I haven't siege. heard before that are happening though. <laughs> but, but it's like, are do you seem alarmed? Are you like, what what was that? Is I wish Raspin was here. Do you like instantly go into like, I'm gonna cast illusions on myself and hide? Like, what is your <laughs> What is your immediate no, reaction to this ridiculousness? Yeah, I think that she's like, okay, well, something's happening. I don't know what's happening. I'm not going to freak out, though, because that's silly. Um, mm. But she's she's going to get um, uh, Gwyneth's attention and kind of calm her down, like redirect mm-hmm. her attention a little bit, calm her down a little bit to just kind of like make – the situation a little mm-hmm. calmer so that it could possibly be able to respond to what's happening how so so yeah Gwyneth is like crying and then like the baby in the crib nearby um starts crying as well because her big sister's crying why wouldn't she cry um it's okay yeah. little baby conflicts make you stronger <laughs> <laughs> Sonia looks Sonia looks at you like can you do something about that? <laughs> uh, and then oh, I think, um, what's everybody's passive perception? My passive perception. At least you two's. Let me see. Uh, yep, yep. Actually, okay. everybody's. What's everybody's passive perception? <laughs> 12. 12. Uh, 15. 14. My passive question is a 14. Oh, yeah. Okay. 13. So we have a, a 15, a 13, and a 14? Mm-hmm. And a 12. And a 12. Okay. So um, uh, uh, so, at, so basically, we're going we're gonna to pan over to the other group. Um, so um, Cecilia and Rose and Kirkon are being – Kirkon has, like, grabbed this weird-ass-looking bow – it's got like big like discs on the end of it. It's got like like wires. It's, oh, it's weird. Cool. 
it's weird it's like a weird like orcish like sorcery bow or whatever like it doesn't it doesn't look like it should work but it's a bow and he's like he's like running with it right now um like and this this woman who has introduced herself as captain raspin has uh is leading you towards her charge air quotes um uh when you hear like a um like uh like you i think you i think you all feel this there's like a staticiness to the air hmm. for a second um and then you very clearly hear like a loud like a large like um like a pop like a sudden expansion of air um oh no um and it seems to be coming from down the street that you're on. What do you do? Mm. Any ideas what that was? I'm gonna I'm gonna move us over to a I'm gonna move us over to a thing. So do we hear it too or Yeah, you you we... both hear this. I guess I'll look out the window. Okay. Uh can you uh you should be on the page now. Uh, can you move your token how you would? You guys are in the back room of this this like civilian's house, basically. And then my um, other people are out here. There we go to. Okay. I'm trying to figure out which way is the door. Uh, this is a door. I don't see the ping. This is a this is a door. Oh. oh wait, I'm on the wrong layer. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is this is where the door is. Okay. For that building you're in. Echo's gonna look out the window. Okay. And try to see what he can see. I yeah. See. So you can. I don't. I don't know exactly what you can see with that. Let me control. No. Mm. This one gonna, seems solid. So you you can kind of you can kind of see. Uh, let me go to my. Hold on. I'm managing a lot of layers right now. So you like you like open the window slightly and you can see out a little better. Oh yeah. Um, so feel free to move around and see what you can see. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's at about that time. I think I don't know if uh, our our heroes can see this, but this big bearded dude like peeks around this corner here. Like he looks up and sees the four of you rushing towards him like kind of starts like oh shit there are people with weapon you both are you're like all obviously armed at this point correct oh yeah uh except for echo who's still in hiding as far as i can tell oh um let me get in there and that's when you hear uh that's when you hear like behind you you hear like some behind this this man you hear like someone shout and then, a, like, a loud boom, and the building that's behind him just catches fire. Uh, Echo would like to open the door. Uh, Echo would like to open the door. Yes. So we're about to add to an added layer of complexity to this. You, you see me? <laughs> Suddenly, worry. a giant orc pops out of this room next to you. Uh, and now feels like a good, as good a time as any to roll initiative. Okay. okay. And then we can probably we can probably cliffhanger the the first round of combat after uh, for after this break. Sure, sounds good. Uh, let's see, where's it? Jeans, uh, b -b 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 oh, you guys While are... everybody's rolling initiative, I will take this moment start. to narrate that Andrella had been trying to help kind of keep the children calmed down, and the moment there was the big boom and firelight started, um, she just grabbed the mom, said. Take mm -hmm. these two, hunker down, um, put them off into some sort of secure corner or something, and then started to follow after Echo. That's that's the wrong token. What's the initiative on the sheet? Um, it should top be center. top center. Yeah. Aha! Thank you. So hold on. Hooray! Oh. Uh, okay. Still rolled bad. And then my um, my my gentleman here. Also going to roll initiative, and then 
Just gonna. I have so many NPCs. Holy shit. <laughs> um. So it begins. There we go. Um, I'm gonna grab. Kirkall. And. Kirkall. Kirkall. Uh, and uh, the in, the other the other NPCs will move on the commoner turn. Okay. Um, and then I just need to roll for, for Johnny Angry Face over here. <laughs> um, that seems... Ah, yes, of the Angry Face clan. <laughs> Grumbering Angry Face of the Angry Face clan. <laughs> why, are you, why are you so mad, bro? Why are you so mad? <laughs> All right, so... Yep, uh, I'm good to go to break, or do we want to try and fight the first round of combat? Uh, we, we can go to break and then jump into yeah, it. Yeah, let's the... go to break. Sure, sure. Cool. So, uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, that was the first part of the first episode of Fair Wanderings. Uh, a lot, I, I'm having a blast. Uh, uh, this group is really, really great so far, so I'm really excited for this. Uh, you're, you're just laughing at all of the snide remarks Biz is leaving in, in this <laughs> chat. Also it's that. part of it. Whatever. It's, of, it's been a lot it's of fine. Fun. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go to break, and we'll be back with more fair wanderings. See you in a bit. Mm -hmm.